We're going to talk about another watercolor technique. It's called wax resist. Here's one formula. Your pencil. Drawing pencils, various types. Most any of them. They contain a wax. Then you draw on your paper with these pencils. And you paint over it. It doesn't stick to those marks. That's called wax resist. There are other forms. Colored pencils. They contain a lot of wax. Come in various colors. You can, you can use them for various techniques in your painting. Want to cover large areas? Use the old crayon. Or you can use what they call a china marker. Problem with drawing in large areas and a problem with wax resist. If you use too much of it, generally 20% or so, uh, it's no longer a watercolor. It becomes a mixed media. And, and, and you have to be careful when you use it. I, I use it very limited uh, quantities, uh, generally. One other item. It's really not wax resist, but it works the same. India ink. Contains a shellac. You paint over it, the paint doesn't stick. It's it's really sort of a form. And, and it comes, and there's different colors. Uh, I, I use black. Now I'm going to show you a painting I did using a wax resist. And, and I'll tell you why I use wax resist to do the painting. Uh, I mean, you can, you can paint your painting, and, and then you can draw over it with watercolor pencil or, or uh, anything else. But, but when you do that, it looks like you've drawn over it. Uh, I use a wax resist first and then I paint over it. Because some of the paint, no matter how, how much you try, will always stick in the, in the little areas in there. And it doesn't look like you've drawn over your painting. It looks like it's part of the painting. And, and, and that's one of the reasons why I use it. Now, now I'm going to show you the painting that I did with a lot of wax resist. This is the painting that I used a lot of wax resist on. Uh, now I'm going to show you the areas that I used on. Uh, all the lines and the rigging you see on this ship were done with wax resist. Same down here. I used a lot of wax resist in here. I did that before I even started painting. I put it in the lines. The anchor chain itself, because it's so small, I went in with a lot of wax resist on that. The wax resist I used was colored pencil. Now, all the dark that you see in this water is India ink, which I told you was a form of wax resist. Um, now you ask why I do it, or why anyone would do it. Look, these are called riggers, liners, pointers. It takes a lot of practice to draw these lines with a brush like this. I'm not that good. It, it, it takes years of practice, as a matter of fact, to really get good at it. I use a colored pencil first to get these very fine details in here. Then I paint over it. And, and, and this is the effect you can get. And, and after I paint over it, I'll go, I'll go back in again with probably watercolor pencil and, and and pick up little highlights here and there on it and, and the inside of these chains with a very fine point on it. I even use a little wax resist on the seagulls here too. Okay, that's why I use wax resist. Don't use a lot, but I used enough in this painting because of the India ink in here and, and, and a lot of it in here. 
then I had to call it a mixed media. This is really a mixed media painting, despite the wide expanse of watercolor. Uh, I felt uncomfortable calling it purely a watercolor. Okay, I'm going to show you some examples of, of how to apply or what it looks like when you apply uh, the crayon, the watercolors, and, and maybe show you how it looks when you try and do it with these with these riggers and liners and whatever else. Okay, here we go with the left brain stuff. I'm going to use the three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. Now, what we have here is a graphite line, India ink. This is colored pencil, blue. Now what you don't see is a white, black, and you got like a red color in here. Crayon, red, again what you don't see is white, blue and black. Okay, let, let's put a, a strip of red watercolor down along here. Look, look what's happening. Now I'm going to make it a little thicker. Okay. Let's, let's clean it out a little bit. A little bit thicker paint. Some more. Let's see how thick we can get it. Okay. Look, I mean, this is really thick paint. Okay, you got thick, you got thin. Look at, look at the white. Pretty neat, huh? Okay, red. Let's try a little yellow. A little thin stuff on here first. Remember, this is called wax resist. Now I'm going to put some thick stuff, almost pure paint, on here. Again, remember, depending on the characteristic of your paint, you got staining. You got opaque, you got transparent. You can pretty much see that this yellow is transparent. Uh, the red, that's cadmium. It's got an opaque tint about it. Okay, yeah. Okay, let's let's try the blue, which is a French ultramarine blue. We're gonna lay it in. Then first, Bernet. Look, I like I like how that works there with the white. Now I'm going to put almost pure paint here. Let me uh, dab some of this water off. Okay. Now let's put some almost pure paint in here. Now look, this is called wax resist. I'll let this dry. Uh, isn't that great? Yeah, that ultramarine starts to granulate in there. Beautiful. I like it. Um, I'll let it dry. I'm going to show you what happens after it dries. What I do is once it dries, on all my paintings when I use this technique, is I go in and lightly buff it with a paper towel to take the paint off these. Now, you can see how, how it works with the darks and the lights and the in-betweens and stuff. Okay, uh, we'll just stop and then we'll finish this up with a little light buffing after it dries. Okay, it's dried. I want to show you the last technique I use. I come in with a paper towel and I gently buff the area. And and really what that does, it just takes off a lot of the excess stuff. Um, I put down the wax resist very, very heavily. Touch is important when you do this. Remember now, this is graphite. Look, it's almost the same as this India ink line that I made here. And then we get into the colored pencil and we progress on down. You still have to consider whether you're 
paint is going to be opaque or transparent. Uh, the staining aspect doesn't really matter at this point. Cadmium red, this one here, is pretty opaque and you can see why I put a lot of paint in here. That covers up a lot of this wax, wax resist and how where there's a lot of water it, it doesn't do it as much. And, and uh, this yellow and, and of course the ultramarine over here which is pretty nice too. If you're going to use it a lot it's not going to be a watercolor painting. Use it as you have to. It's a good technique. Remember now this is just graphite pencil. This is India ink. There's very little difference between the two. Uh, that's all I have to say about this. Uh, happy painting.